Hello. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, so good morning. Uh, I'm Shu Chang and currently working at Cora. Uh, today I'm presenting this paper that I did in my PhD uh, with my collaborator Max Hopper and my advisor Lauren Terving uh, at the Group Plants Research from University of Minnesota. So today I'm presenting this project with the title of Crowd-Based Personalized Natural Language Explanation for Recommendations. So in the keynote spe uh, speaker, he mentioned about the importance of uh, being able to explain the recommendation to the users because that often results in better user experience. So let's take a look at how do recommender system explain, explain themselves um, in industry. So a couple of examples here. So this is the, um, uh, on the uh, Amazon Prime video and this is the explanation basically says based on titles you have watched and more. Um, and another example here is in Play Store. Um, well, it says, you know, this is recommending a radio station. It's just similar to another artist. Uh, and a similar idea was proposed uh, probably first by Herlocker in 2000. Uh, so this is based on the collaborative filtering model um, to find the item similarity. So when you recommend a new item to uh, users, um, these simple explanations may not work every time. So I wonder if can we generate more personalized and natural language explanations so you gave more details about uh, uh, why you recommend. And in fact, if you look at Pandora, they did a pretty nice job here. Uh, so if you ask them why I'm getting this uh, music, they may say you based on uh, you know, your listening history and these are the key attributes of this music. And similar approach has been explored by Tintarif and Jesse Vig uh, before in academia as well. So I want to take this a step further and ask the question. Uh, so if you look closely, uh, you can still find this explanation to be formulaic. Uh, so this like filled in uh, the music genome automatically by a machine. So I want to ask the question, can we do better than this formulaic explanations? And the answer is yes. Um, so I'm going to show you this example that we did in MovieLens. For those who don't know about MovieLens, it's a recommendation, movie recommendation website where you come in, provide movies, uh, provide ratings on movies, uh, and tag movies, and get recommendations in return. So this is what we um, did in MovieLens. For a given user, based on their previous uh, reading history, they may see one of these explanations. So for one user, they may see um, from your movie lens profile, it seems that you prefer movies tagged as visual. And this is for the movie uh, Gravity. Gravity is unlike what you have seen on a cinema screen before, and arguably, it has one of the best uses of 3D in a movie. And a different user may see a recommendation explanation like this. Um, so from your movie lens profile, it seems that you prefer movies tagged as intense. The movie is a pretty intense 90 minutes with Bullock's character constantly battling one catastrophe after another, and all of it is amazing to see. So how did we generate this? So to give you an overview of the process, on a very high level, the approach we took is a mixed computation. Basically, we combine uh, both the machine learning pipeline and with crowdsourcing effort. Um, so here are the key ingredients for generating this uh, uh, explanation. Uh, so the explanation has the following sentence structure. From your movie lens profile, it seems that you prefer movies tagged as a key topic. So the first step we want to do is to model uh, the key topics of each item in our system. And the second part is the natural language explanation part, where uh, we use uh, also mixed uh, computation approach to generate this explanation. And third step is we need to model user's interest and present the user the matching explanation based on their uh, history. So let's take a look at the first step. Model topics of uh, items. And in this approach, we have a uh, machine learning pipeline generate initial um, topics about items and then have a crowdsourcing process to refine the, uh, the output from the machine process. And we recruited the crowd workers from one of the most popular uh, crowdsourcing platform, Amazon Mechanic Turk. So for each movie, we take the top 20 most relevant tags about this movie, and we build a similarity, semantic similarity graph for these 20 tags. And for 
given pair of uh, tags, we measure their similarity based on uh, this uh, word to vec model that is trained on a sample of IMDB review data. So for the word to vec model, basically you can find the similarity between words uh, if you train it on uh, a text. So in this case, we train this thing, uh, we train the word to vec model on the movie domain data, that's the IMDB review, so we can know, given two tags, what are the semantic similarity between them. So once we have this uh, similarity graph, we can run a uh, uh, graph-based clustering algorithm on it and to get a uh, clustering result. And in this case, we use the affinity propagation. Um, so we got around four to six clusters for each mo movie. Then we gave this cluster to the crowd. And if you have worked with clustering before, you probably know as a super unsupervised learning method, the output usually is not uh, you know, uh, acceptable to show on in the final product. Um, so in this case, we asked the crowd mainly to refine the clustering in two ways. Uh, the first is we want to filter out tags uh, that don't fit well in clusters, or they are inappropriate to show to the end users. And the second task they did is to pick a representative tag from each cluster to represent that entire cluster. So this is the interface we used on uh, Amazon Mechanic Turk. Basically, the Turkers come in and they see uh, a survey they fill out, and this uh, shows the, uh, uh, how people pick the representative tags for this cluster. And just to give you a concrete example here, uh, for the movie Goodfella, we have four clusters shown on the right here. And then you see the crowd uh, did a decent job on uh, refining clustering results. For instance, the mentor doesn't belong to the first cluster that well. And also, like, uh, if you show uh, you know, users you like bloody movies, it can be inappropriate. So they did a pretty good job. And they also picked out like, the, uh, uh, the tags in red that are representative of the entire cluster. Um, so those are the words that we included in our final explanation. And the second step, once we have this key topic uh, of each item, then we need to generate explanation that basically say, why, if you're interested in this aspect, why we think it's good, this item is good, right? Um, so similarly, we have this, uh, you know, uh, having uh, um, a machine generate this um, uh, output that we find by, uh, by crowd. So in this case, what we did is, once we have each of these key uh, topical aspects about movie, uh, we index uh, the IMDB reviews, and for each given uh, topic, we search for some candidate quotes that will you know, talk, describe why this aspect of the movie is good. And these are shown here. So for each key topic aspect, we find six candidate quotes. And then we have the crowd uh, to take a look at the quote and aggregate them um, into the final uh, explanation. So in this crowd processing uh, step, we take a map and reduce uh, workflow. Basically, you can think in the mapper phase, uh, we ask the three independent workers to do this task. So they were shown with this uh, interface, where the first part saying, you know, here is this topic aspect about this movie, and here are six uh, quotes we think that might you know, describe this aspect of the movie. And their task is to pick one they think that best describe uh, the topical aspect, then rewrite it in a way that we want to show to the users. Uh, and at the reducer step, we ask another three crowd workers to basically vote on uh, the three explanations written by uh, the workers in the mapper phase. So they vote on them, and we take the, uh, the best one as the final output. Then the third step, we want to model users' interest on this key topical aspect, and then present them the, the matching explanations. Uh, and this step, without going into further details, the general idea is basically looking at uh, um, you know, the, uh, the tags of each movie and how what's the rating on each movie the user have, then aggregate that information so we get this uh, user genome, essentially say for each user what, how, you know, which topic aspect they're mostly interested about. Um, then we basically show the, the, top, the, 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 the topical aspect that ranks the highest on user genome. So you can check more in the papers. Um, so we did a user experiment in MovieLens then. 
And in this user experiment, we generate this natural language explanations for 100 movies. And with each movie costing around a little less than $4 per movie. And, and we paid the crowd workers pretty well uh, above the federal um, uh, minimum wage. Um, and then we invited over 200 movieless users to take an online survey where the survey is a within subject design. Each user is presented with two random uh, unseen movies. Um, and for one movie, we show them a baseline explanation. And for the other movie, we show them this uh, natural language uh, explanation. And of course, it's, uh, or the order is randomized. Um, and for the baseline we used here is we want to find a baseline that's similar to this natural language explanation. So we use the Jessivik's tag explanation. So it basically it says, we recommend the movie because you like the following features. And then we show five tags. So it's similar with what the Pandora did. Um, and here, like the tags are basically the, based on the user genome, but also relevant to this movie. And you can check out the details in the paper. Um, so if you look at the result, uh, the first thing we found is um, the users are more satisfied with this uh, natural language explanations. Um, so for, um, we asked users to provide um, a basic readings on several statements uh, from uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree. And for all these three statements, uh, users have reported you know, real highly on these uh, natural language explanations. Uh, so the three statements are, I wish movieless included explanation like this. Uh, the explanation is easy to understand and explanation is useful. And the second thing we find is that the user have more trust in this uh, natural language explanation, which is also as expected. Um, so similarly, the user rated higher on, I trust the explanation. The explanation reflects my preferences about this movie. And third thing we find is users per, uh, perceive natural language explanations to contain more appropriate amount of information. So here, we're trying to basically measure, um, the user will definitely spend longer time reading this explanation. So what's their um, efficiency um, of you know, helping them making decision? So for the subjective uh, part, we asked user whether it contains the right amount of information, and the user reported higher on this natural language uh, explanation. But if you look at the time, of course, users spend longer time reading the natural language explanation. And uh, um, another thing we want to measure is whether users know more about the movie after seeing this natural language explanation. And uh, so with that, um, we basically asked the user, how much do you know about this movie at different stage? And then we see that there is, the user know more about the movie with this natural language explanation. Um, and final point is kind of a little surprising, uh, uh, is that we find little difference uh, of those two types of explanation of helping users making the final decision. Um, with that, I want to uh, move into this discussion about uh, you know, the learning we have from this study. Um, so here we use the mixed computation approach of combining human wisdom with this uh, machine learning system. And it's pretty common, uh, if you look around, you know, the image recognition task, basically you have this uh, label generated by a human and you train a machine learning model uh, based on that to mimic human behavior. Um, and here, the difference we did is the human and the machine are, um, they have this collaboration relationship. So in this case, we are serving users. We are generating explanations. And you see that the, um, the machine takes some part of it and human take another part of it. And the good thing about this is uh, you can have this uh, feedback loop because the, the human generated data can be used to train the machine learning model. And the machine learning model can automate the easy task but leaving the more challenging or you know, more that flexible and creative task to, to human. And so I think this is a really uh, interesting direction that worth exploring. And this is actually, you know, Facebook M uh, is a, takes a similar approach of combining the human uh, and with the machine learning system. And I think it's gonna be a really interesting um, uh, experiment. So the takeaways of this talk is uh, we used a mixed computation approach uh, to come up with natural language explanations. And we have the human effort in this process to help refine topical clusters generated from the uh, algorithm, and also having the human to synthesize the review quotes from a search engine. 
And, and then we find that the, the explanations we generated resulted in better user experience uh, than a tag-based uh, explanation. So with that, I will conclude my talk. Thank you very much. Uh, an exciting talk, really. I mean, we're actually opening the new page and, and the field of recommender system on the crossroad with a few other things. Uh, I don't want to ask this pesky question. Are there any significant differences in user feedback? Uh, the, the picture is nice. Is there any significance? Yes, yes, ah. yes. You can check that in the paper. Oh, okay, yes. great. Yeah. yeah. Great talk. Um, so when we're doing this processing and we're taking content from the reviews mm -hmm. and putting that into our explanations, yes. that raises some really interesting legal and ethical questions around <laughs> copyright and plagiarism. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, have you looked at all at generating as a part of this uh, citations to the source material and appropriate quote marks, and whether, do you have any insight as to how that would affect the way the users perceive the explanations that you're generating? Yes, that's a great question. So I guess you ask two questions. The first is the legal part of it. Uh, that's the reason we didn't launch this thing in MovieDance, uh, because, yeah, you get exactly that issue. The second issue I think is uh, interesting that you raised that, uh, uh, should we tell user, you know, this is from IMDB review? Yes. Uh, I mean, I think if you tell user that, they will change in their perception about the uh, explanations for sure. Uh, because if you include that information, basically establish some authority about the, the information you provide. So instead of this thing showing from random, this you know, black box recommender, you know this is actually written by a real human. And uh, so I do think that will make changes in the, uh, the user experience, yes. Um, have you thought at all about how to make this uh, scalable to uh, translation to other languages if you uh, needed to create a localized system uh, to deliver, you know, f mm -hmm. fluid and grammatically correct uh, explanations mm -hmm. in other languages? Yeah, I think that that is indeed a challenge. Uh, I mean, uh, so the parts that you can translate into another language is you probably need to recruit crowd workers that are from a different, uh, you know, no different language, and also like the, the review source, um, has to be in a different language. Like uh, I think, like the um, the candidate quotes are an essential step here because the the most crowd workers they are not really highly motivated to complete uh, uh, this task, and uh, and a lot of crowd workers are not able to write explanation because they might not have seen the movie, but they can do the language, you know, rewrite it and clean it up. Um, so I do think if you have the source of the data. And if you have the workers in a different language, that can be done. But uh, I agree, uh, for this human-involved task, the scalability in different languages is going to be a challenge, for sure. So I had also thought about the plagiarism thing, so I'll let that go. I thought it was really cool, one comment, one question. I thought it was really cool that you talked about explanations actually helping people learn more about mm -hmm. the movie, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually something we don't think about as much as a community, that recommendations actually also teach people about whatever domain they're in. Uh, the question, though, mm -hmm. is, you know, you pin this on this being natural language, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, is it, do you think it's really just that it's like a natural language sentence versus tags, or is it because it relates the tags more deeply to the movie, or is it mm -hmm, just that? Mm -hmm. You know, I want yeah, to yeah, yeah. think a little more about the mechanism by which this makes yeah. people happier. Yeah, uh, great question. Thanks, Dan. Um, I think, yeah, like the natural language, I, I think is a poor term to describe this thing. Uh, because, I mean, if you look at the tag, it's also natural language. It's just the formulae, uh, right? Um, so really, uh, I think that makes the user think of the different is because it's more than just language. It seems to be re written by a human. And it has the details, and it has richer information uh, in this explanation. And that's why it makes users feel better. Um, so. Sorry about the poor name. <laughs> so one more question. One, thanks, thanks for your talk. Um, very nice. I wonder if you're aware of the work on opinionated uh, recommendation by Barry Smith, because it has some similarities. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing is exclusively taking the sentences out of reviews and mm -hmm. using scoring mechanisms and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. So I guess the issue is one of scalability. He mm -hmm. has no crowdsourcing, mm -hmm. uh, and you do. And I wonder if having looked at what the kind of explanations you're producing, whether mm -hmm. you could see ways of automating the process 
uh, so that you wouldn't need the crowdsourcing um, for the scalability? Mm, yeah, that's uh, actually, so, so I'm not familiar with the Barry's work, but thanks for uh, uh, pointing to that. And I will check it out. And um, so talking about the scalability issue, I think I do think like in current framework, the crowd is an essential part. If you take it out, the quality will suffer a lot. I mean, you can think over time, once you gather more data from the human, you can improve your machine, right? You can improve clustering, you can improve your you know, ranking of the search engine. But uh, in the you know, starting phase, you stu still need to gather data. And uh, uh, talking about scalability, actually, uh, for the crowdsourcing on Turk, is pretty scalable. I mean, w for this 100 movies, of course, I did it over a span of a week because I was making it. But if you want to do it in a day uh, or in an hour, it's doable. It's entirely doable. So I don't think scalability is that big issue. But of course, if you're talking about uh, tens of millions of the movies, that's a different story, right? So thanks again, Thank then this concludes our session.